Hello and welcome. Well, our special guest today doesn't need much of an introduction, but for anyone that's been living under a rock for the last five years, here goes. Most people know Sam Wood as a health and fitness expert, but what you don't know is that his fitness extends well beyond adults. In 2007, he founded Gecko Sports, Australia's first ever kids gym, helping kids um, age three right through to high school kids um, with strength, balance, coordination and fitness. Now, today, Sam Wood is a dad to three beautiful girls and is one of Australia's leading uh, fitness experts and the founder of Australia's fastest growing online training, nutrition and mindfulness program, 28 by Sam Wood. Oh, and by the way, he did this little thing in 2015. I'm not sure if you ever saw it. Uh, <laughs> the Bachelor um, season three, where he met his now wife, Schnez. Hey, thank you so much for joining us, Sam. How are you? I'm good, Rach. I thought we were going to get through the intro without The Bachelor there for a second. <laughs> I was hello. <laughs> but see, I, le I left it to the bottom of the intro. See, I did, yeah, all, the, I was... I did all the fitness and dad stuff first. So. <laughs> I'm definitely, uh, yeah, I'll never, The Bachelor was the best thing I've ever done because I got to meet Snez and Eve, obviously. But yeah, it's all about family and fitness at the moment, that's for sure. A hundred percent, you know, and we've been really lucky at Kitty Petey. We've done quite a bit with you in the last 12 months. We featured you in, you know, newborn guide, our COVID guide. I think we even did something for Father's Day, um, but this is our first chat. So this is really, really exciting. So this is great. Yeah. great now, <laughs> life in lockdown hasn't exactly been a um, relaxing break for you guys. As a family, you've been very busy inspiring Aussie families to get up off the couch, you know, to raise the endorphin levels and stay positive with the free live workouts, which we were just chatting about. So tell us, you know, what's the feedback been on them? It's actually been incredible. The gratitude and the community. We sort of, I don't know, as I alluded to before we jumped on air, I, Snez and I, said, oh, we should do free workouts for people because not everyone can join our program and people need it now. And I guess the biggest catalyst was getting families moving in particular with their kids because kids were now no longer able to organise sport or PE because they were doing their school from home. So we decided to do workouts that were kid friendly at 9am every morning, putting them through YouTube and our Facebook channel. And um, yeah, it went crazy. We had, uh, you know, well over 3 million people do the workouts. Oh, my the last God. Week. Did you ever expect that at all? Like, I never. It was absolutely crazy. You know, some days we'd have 100,000 people joining us for a workout. Get out of town. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely amazing. And Fridays are fun Fridays. Today we worked out and I was wearing a Ghostbusters costume. <laughs> uh, and, uh, little Charlie, my nine-month-old, had a little marshmallow uniform on. Oh, and, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just, it's about not taking life too seriously. I yeah. really think this time in particular, if you can, as you alluded to, get the energy up, get the mood up, get those endorphins pumping in the morning and keep, keep you and the kids active. So yeah, they weren't, they weren't super serious. They were really, um, you know, really uh, varied workouts that you know, didn't really matter if you were five years old or 50 years old, you'd still really get something out of it. And the feedback we received was awesome. And using stuff around the house as well, wasn't it? Like, you know, pints of milk type yeah. of thing for, for weights yeah, and or, yeah, yeah. resistance. And stronger, you can, yeah. So look, I think, you know, some people have dumbbells and kettlebells at home. Lots of people don't. And we didn't want to, um, you know, exclude those people. So just teaching people that you don't need a, fancy gym set up at home to still do great workouts obviously when it comes to kids it's about moving their body predominantly they don't really need weights it's about yeah. balance and coordination and motor skills and getting their heart rate up but most importantly making it fun so you know we had spinning wheels and dice and novelty cards and <laughs> as i said <laughs> the dress ups. it was uh yeah it was a real hoot <laughs> Now, there's a famous quote that says, you know, if your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more and become more, then you are a leader. And that definitely you are, you know, congratulations on all you've achieved and continuing to do because it is just absolutely brilliant. You know, and as a motivator for other people, I'd love to learn a little bit about what motivates you um, and tell us, you know, where did it all start for you, you know, and where and when did you decide to pursue a career in fitness, just sort of doing what you do? So I've kind of gone full circle, Rach. I started off um, first year of my uni degree. I was working at the uni gym writing programs for people. And I really, 
you know, I've all, I love fitness because I've sort of always been a pretty sporty person, but I probably more so love people. So for me, it was about, uh, yeah, being able to combine those two. And then once I started as a personal trainer all the way back in 2001, I, um, you know, I'd work with a lot of mums and it wasn't long before they were bringing their kids to me. And that was, that was kind of unexpected, but I, you know, I was sort of a big kid myself, you know, <laughs> coaching my little brothers, you know, footy team or whatever it was. It was something I really enjoyed doing. And um, it did, it was this really, whether they were a tennis prodigy wanting help with agility and footwork, or they were a, a little boy or girl needing a bit of self-confidence and, a, you know, someone to sort of lift them up a little bit because they, they weren't, you know, they're a bit down on themselves or training for cross country or whatever it was. And before I knew it, I was doing 100 personal training appointments a week and 40 of them were with kids. How would you and fit that into a week? I I was, it was intense, you know. So the, the thing with your personal trainer is, you know, particularly if you're not working in the city, I was working in Bayside in Melbourne. And so from five in the morning to 11 in the morning, you're really busy. And then from sort of five in the yeah. afternoon to eight in the afternoon, you're really mm. busy with people coming home from work you have this really big gap in the middle. And before I knew it, I had parents bringing their kids to see me for an hour or half an hour rather than go to school. So not that I'm <laughs> saying don't go to school, but it was fascinating that they could see that spending half an hour with me or an hour with me once a week was actually giving them more value and it didn't matter that they missed a subject at school and then they'd go back. So mm. um, yeah, built some amazing friendships. It was really common that I'd train mum, dad and the kids, not together, but I kind of worked with the whole family and after doing that for six years, uh, yeah, as you said in the intro, I launched Gecko, which was Australia's first ever kids gym. We did awesome. birthday party, we did Junior Gecko, which was a development program for three to five year olds. We did uh, holiday programs, we did in school incursions and excursions for schools. And um, yeah, I loved every minute. It was something that the more I did, the more I loved it. And you know, it's, it, the world had already started changing, you know, more electronic computer games, less time outside, smaller backyards, more academic pressure and less PE, like all of these factors mm. that mean that our kids don't move as much as they used to and as much as they need to, uh, you know, basic nutrition education, all of that kind of stuff became a part of it. And, um, and then I kind of, I opened an adult, well, I opened a PT studio, so I worked for a PT studio, opened Gecko, then opened my own PT studio, which is still around today, called The Woodshed. And then um, off the back of The Bachelor, I launched an online program, 28. And it's, it's interesting, even though we're online, I still work with the same people. It's a program that helps you get in shape from home. It's hugely popular with women aged late 20s to early 50s, lots of mums on the program. And um, I make sure that the great thing is it always trickles down. If you're getting yourself active, you become a good, good role model for your kids. Oh, 100%. Um, get active together on the weekends and it, and it only helps. You've just got to, um, yeah, if you can tap into someone in the household, someone in the family and have them start to change their habits, it often has a ripple effect. So how would you describe, I guess, what, you, what your mission is and what's your, your, your driving force and what sort of gets you out of bed every morning? Oh, look, it's the, the great thing about an online program is it's very scalable. So, you know, we've had 400,000 Australians do my program in just over four years. And it's been absolutely crazy, extremely exciting, lots of hard work. And then you feel like you're just getting started. You feel like we're sort of now at a point where we well known enough that the next four years are going to be even bigger. So for us, it's yeah. just to help as many people as possible. You know, whether it's you know, uh, mums, dads, kids, we don't mind. We just want to help get Australians active. Now, and you've always had an affinity with children's fitness, like you were saying, but as a dad now, has this, I, I don't know, yeah. given you a new sense of appreciation for the work that you do? And as a dad, you know, really what do you want your kids to learn from what you do? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, look, obviously I became a dad really quickly because of Evie. So I went from, you know, being a bachelor to going on the bachelor to, um, <laughs> you know, Eve moving from Perth to Melbourne and us all living together. So it was a really, um, 
really steep learning curve and the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, Evie and I are, get on really well. We're like little mates. You know, I'm the fitness coach for her girls' footy team and she's now rowing and doing all these other awesome things. And then with my two little ones, Willow's two and a half and Charlie's nearly 10 months. Um, absolutely, you've got to practice what you preach. There's no point doing what I do and then not doing it with my own family. So getting active as a family, walks, bike rides, going to the park, whatever it is, um, and, you know, then probably doing some more sport-based stuff with Evie is, uh, yeah, definitely something that I'm really big on. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, we published your article on how to get your kids to understand health and fitness from a young age. For someone who maybe hasn't read the article yet, can you give us just a little bit of an overview um, about it and just tell us what, what inspired you to write it? Yeah, I mean, it was, it's just, it's really interesting because... It was, it's something that I've had as a, I get as a question so often. I mean, from the gecko days to now, I would be approached by hundreds of parents every year asking me that question. And it's hard as a parent. And, you know, I know there's a parent because it's often more powerful coming from a third party, whether it be a teacher they love, a friend, they, a, you know, family friend, um, a sports coach, the power that you can have, you know, the amount of kids that I'd, you know, work with and I'd tell them they had to start eating a healthy breakfast and they'd go, okay, Sam, straight away. And mum and dad would roll their eyes because they'd told their child that a million yeah, times. Yeah, a million before times. I, yeah. And finally the penny would drop. So it, um, you know, it's, it, it's, I, I think it, you don't want to get too theoretical. You want to be really practical. And I think what you realize when you work with kids and when you work with families is, First of all, you need to practice what you preach. It's very, very hard to, um, you know, get your kids active if you're not, you don't have to be an elite athlete or a triathlete, you know, run marathons or anything mm. like that, or a gym junkie. But if you don't have care for your own health, it's very hard to push the barrow for your kids when you're not exhibiting that behaviour yourself. Mm. I think the second thing is you have to understand that as a parent, you need to be a facilitator. I think... Um, every child is different. Some kids love team sports. Some kids, kids are intimidated by team sport and they love individual sports. Some kids, they'll find the mainstream netball, footy, soccer really appealing. Others that might be more about ballet, dancing and archery. But you need to <laughs> make a commitment as a parent to do whatever it takes. If yep. you need to drive your kids to three different sports a semester for 10 years until they find the one that works for them, I genuinely feel that you need to do that as a parent. Um, and it, so these are just simple things, but these are things that when you say to them, you say these to, um, to kids and to their parents, they really do have that aha moment where they're like, yeah, I probably did try two sports and then just go, my kid's not that sporty. It's like, yeah, yeah well, they didn't like those two sports, but I bet you there's something that they like. Or um, why don't you get your kids active with you? I mean, that's a big one that's often underestimated. It's all very well that you go to the gym and then you're telling them, do things with them. Kids love, you know, Willow is two and a half. She loves going on little adventures with me, whether it's I've got one of those bikes with the big bucket thing at the front. Right at the front, yeah. Dutch cargo bike and she sits in it and we go on these adventures and we're picking flowers and finding shells and... She, she literally has a smile on her face for <laughs> two hours. We go on, we go on walks. I probably ride twenty kilometres, and it doesn't feel like exercise at all. And I, and if you don't think that that kind of behaviour rubs off on your kids, I mean the the stats there are that uh, health, you know, healthy kids become healthy adults yeah. more often than not, and unhealthy kids or overweight kids become overweight adults. You know, we really do have a responsibility of par as parents to set the tone at this early age. It's not to get too hardcore about it, but the stats don't lie. Yeah. And it's absolutely imperative that you set your kids up as best you can for a healthy future. And look, you do mention that in the article, you said, you know, um, what health and fitness is to us adults doesn't need to be called health and fitness to them. You know, no, exercise no. should be called playing and fun and healthy eating should be creating and cooking. And once these are big parts of their life, then you're already halfway there. So is that what you're sort of saying also? You just integrate it into their, their life so that it's just part of what they do and they don't know yeah. any different? I mean, the more, if you're too technical, you tend to lose them. There tends to be a bit of a disconnect. You know, you don't, you're not 
getting your kids to do squats. It might be, let's frog jump around the house or let's turn what is a great workout into a game. I mean, the example that I put in the article was the food one. I think yes. the more our kids are hands-on in the kitchen, the more they understand what real food is, the more they enjoy cooking. It doesn't have to be crazy healthy. You can do yummy snacks as well. But the more they understand that, the better the relationship they're going to have with food. I think when kids think that everything that they consume needs to come out of a packet, that's when we've got a real problem. Yeah, totally agree. You know, just getting to this COVID-19 thing that we've just been through, you know, it's been pretty tough on everyone. But, you know, one thing for sure um, that gets anyone out of slump is um, is exercise, that's for sure. So, you know, like, if could you just explain to us, you know, why exercise is so important, not only for our physical but also our mental health? Look, there's a number of reasons. I think we, we've really struggled as a collective with structure. And I think if you can have a workout scheduled in, particularly in the morning, that's a big tick in the structure column. There's huge research to show that it's not just good for you physically, but it's good for you mentally. It releases those endorphins. It boosts your mood. It increases your energy levels. I mean, I often think you know, people say to me, I'm too tired to work out and they don't realise that it's actually the working out that will boost their energy, not detract from it. So yep. um, the key is just to do, you've got to find something that you like. You know, if, you, if you're battling yourself every single day and you hate every second of it, that's going to be a pretty tough battle to win in the long term. So th the thing is, there's no wrong way to move. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a bike ride, if it's a walk, if it's a game of soccer, if it's a spin class, if it's boxing, but you've just got to do something. Yeah. And getting it done in the morning absolutely sets you up for the day. You know, we all have, we all have grand intentions at the start of the day, but then life happens and it more often than not <clears> doesn't the workout falls by the wayside. So you know, I just, and that doesn't mean, I don't mean at 5am, you don't have to be in the crazy 5am club. You can do it at 9am or 10am or whatever it is. But I just think moving your body in some way before midday, um, I mean, the mental health benefits, particularly when you get outside are really strong. You get the vitamin D, you get the fresh air, um, you know, there's all those extra benefits. But yeah, just moving your body absolutely is proven to help your mental and physical health. Mm. Look, can I ask you a question? And I'm confused. And let's face it, it doesn't take much to make me confused. You know, as Aussies, <laughs> uh, you know, as Aussies, we're, we're a sporting nation. We have great weather. We have the ability to be outdoors the majority of the year. We're not always in Melbourne, but we've got good food and coffee. So that sort of makes up for it. So that's okay. Mm. But generally, you know, there's very little opportunity for excuses for any of us. Now, in your opinion, you know, how have we managed to reach and maintain the ob obesity le levels that we have here in Australia? Like, this is a, a big sort of question, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, a great, it's a great question because when you do travel overseas, they do have a little... Um, we kind of have the world's fooled a little bit. And I mean that, I mean that respectfully, but... I do think people think Australians are just full of bronze dozies running around the beach in our budgie smugglers and it's not <laughs> you know, in, in great shape and it's not, it's not really the case. You know, there's, we are like every other Western country. We consume far too many calories and we don't move our body enough. And it's, it seems simplistic to narrow it down to those two things, but that's what it comes down to junk food, processed food, uh, sedentary lifestyle. You know, it once if you, if you do both of those things for long enough, the kilos are going to um, get yeah. stacked on and our health is going to slowly but surely deteriorate. And the longer we let that go on for, the harder it is to work our way back. And for many of us, eventually we go, it's too hard. Now it mm. isn't too hard, but it feels too hard. So... Um, you know, I know that's a really simple answer to a really, really serious problem, but it is almost that simple. We need to move more. We need to eat less. I'd probably add to that eat better because it's not just a matter of counting calories. It's consuming proper real food and getting away from the refined sugars and the processed crap. But um, if you can move your body more and it's, it's incidental activity, not just structured exercise, it's walking more it's getting your steps up it's taking 
the stairs, uh, the stairs at stairs. work. <laughs> yeah, all all of that stuff adds up. I mean, there's some, been some really damning statistics coming out in in Western countries, particularly those that are in full isolation. But even in Australia, full lockdown. But even in Australia, on the amount our um, steps have reduced since COVID has been been apparent. So mm. I think we're, as Australians, we're averaging less than forty percent of our daily step count that we were before COVID over the last eight weeks. Mm. But do you sort of see this overall, it's like a psychological shift that we need to make, you know, do you see it's like what sort of needs to shift in our minds to, to, to make that big leap forward, do you think? Because, I, you know, sort of looking at the stats, I think it was a 2017-18 um, study from the Australian Bureau of Statistics National Health Survey showed that two thirds, which is 67% of Aussies, which is like 12.5 million people are obese or overweight. It's just incredible. I mean, how much of this is a mindset shift, do you think? Yeah, look, I think, I do think the worm is turning. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a click your fingers fi fix, unfortunately, but mm. I do think that, you know, before 2000, in that sort of last 20 years, we were probably in denial a little bit. We didn't think that you know, as a nation, we were that unhealthy. We kind of looked, pointed the finger at the US and the UK without looking, you know, in ourselves in the mirror. And I think, I mean, first of all, you have to realise it. If, you, if you're in denial, you're never going to change. And I feel like we are, as a nation, sort of coming out of that denial phase. Mm. Then there's the education component. So why have we gotten to this point? And you know, there needs to be legislation changes, whether it be through schools, whether it be through yeah. labelling junk food and, you know, marketing of bad foods on television and brainwashing our children, all of that kind of stuff. So there's, there's a, but, but there is a shift. I, I do feel, you know, it also, it almost was a bit uncool to be the healthy one ten, even 10 years ago. You know, you were the difficult one who wouldn't just go with the flow if you ordered the healthy thing or asked for something that wasn't on the menu or whatever it was, there's definitely been a, you know, and to find a healthy grocer and that kind of thing. They were few and far between. They're now on every shop corner. So there is, there is a shift. It's going to take the next 10 years, I think, for us to hopefully see, see a reduction. But, I mean, it's quite scary for the first time ever. Um, the life expectancy of our children is lower than our own. And that's never happened before. And that's pretty scary. That's, yeah. That's terrifying. You know, um, just getting back to COVID-19, you know, we're still not out of the woods yet. Um, but a lot of people have used this time in lockdown to reflect and reassess and make, I guess, an inventory of their lives. You know, so to keep the good stuff and throw out all the rest type of stuff. But, you know, as um, we're slowly emerging out of lockdown, um, this is a really great time to start afresh and make positive changes to our lives and to, I guess, yeah. create a, a new a new normal for ourselves. I guess so, so for someone who wants to take the leap forward into a healthier life, lifestyle like tell us what's your pitch like for someone that that maybe is, is yeah. something new for them no i think i think you probably should write down what you've been you know where the silver linings have been during this period as in what things you've discovered i've you know i've, I've really seen a lot of families exercising together i think um, you know, getting out of the rat race of getting to work in the hustle and bustle of peak hour traffic and having a bit more time for yourself has been good. But I also think it's been a great, probably the greatest silver lining to come out of this is it's really awakened us all for what we took for granted. Yeah. And the message that I think is most important is let's not just forget that and go back to how we used to be once mm -hmm. things normalised to a more complete level. I think, you know, let's understand all these things that we used to take for granted. I mean, you see the environmental benefits that are happening because less cars and less pollution and that kind of thing. I think generally people have been kinder and nicer to each other. I think there's, you know, I think that's been noticeable as we've it's all- It's taken a pandemic for it to happen, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 and, it, and it sucks and it's wrong that it takes that, but I think, I think there's been some real life lessons and some real I agree. Um, gratitude for things. That, and I, I just, I guess my, my, I'm, this is, I'm not preaching to others. Everyone's their own person, but I think my own message to, to me and 
that I've spoken about with Snez and um, I think the things that we're really strong about with our kids is these, these things that we used to take for granted, let's not take them for granted anymore. And let's look at the three or four things that have actually been nice things to come out of this. And we've definitely spent more time together as a family. We've exercised more outside as a family. Um, and we've loved every bit of that. So I think yeah, more of that. Yeah, keep, keep the good stuff. And yeah. Uh, yeah, don't forget those things that you've taken for granted. Just getting back to the whole getting fit thing. Um, how much of, I guess, body transformation and just getting fit in general is in the mind? You know, is it a mental game first, um, first and foremost over, I guess, a physical one? Yeah, it definitely is. It, it, it definitely is. I mean, unless you have a purpose to why you're doing it, it's not going to last. So, yeah. Um, and, and as much as it's a hard thing for people to get their head around, motivation is always going to be fleeting. We're going to have good days. We're going to have bad days. That was my next question. <laughs> yeah. So the key is for, for sustained success, the key is moving your body on the good days, uh, on yeah. the bad days, not just good days. So I think, you know, I always encourage my 28 ers to write down their why. Why is it important to me to look after my health? And, you can't tell someone what their why should be. It needs to be, it needs yeah, to come it's from be in it. Exactly. You no, know, I want to get rid of back pain. It might be, I need to lose 10 kilos for my wedding. It might be, I need to be a better role model for my children. It might be a combination of things, but your why I think should be somewhere where you can, if you, you know, if you're starting to waver, if you're starting to, if you're starting to fade, you remind yourself what your why is. It can be a great, you know, Kickstarter to keep you going. Um, you know, focus on progress, not perfection. Yeah. Don't try, you know, do two hours of exercise every day and never eat your favourite foods ever again. That's going to not be an enjoyable life. And it's, it's not sustainable. And, it's not and most people, if they try those extreme um, versions, they Just don't, don't last for it long and they typically go bounce back even worse than yeah. where they were. So, yeah. Um, you know, you're much better off to be an eight out of 10 forever than a 10 out of 10 for six weeks and then drop back to a two. So, um, you know. Do you think that motivation and discipline are the same thing? Uh, they're definitely related. I don't know if I'd say they're the same thing. I, I mean, you do need, yeah. I mean, dis discipline is important, but I think, I think that's where it comes around the rules that you set for yourself. If you set yourself a 10 out of 10 expectation, you're probably just setting yourself up to fail. If you set yourself an eight out of 10 expectation, you know, you're still going to have a beer or a glass of wine or a piece of chocolate. You're not going to yeah. work out every day, but you might get it done five out of seven days. All of a sudden you start to feel fantastic because you're actually achieving your goal because you set a better goal. Don't set yourself some crazy intense rules ultimately you're never going to be able to adhere to and then you just feel Put a bit the pressure on you like, yeah yeah you feel like you failed and here we go again you know the people that get in great shape they have a nice linear line like this yeah the ones go yo, yo up and down or go around in circles find it a lot more difficult well you know overall i guess you you really proved that it's possible to incorporate workouts into busy schedules and especially with young kids, you know, and sort of send the videos um, you run in the classes and you've got sort of Charlie walking around in a walker. So there's really no excuses for, for anyone, but you know, how can, do you motivate someone, I, I guess who has the best intentions, but just can't commit, you know, do you have to sort of break through um, any, any other roadblocks or is it what you were just saying just now? Is it the fact that you just need to just sort of anchor, anchor to your why and your purpose and, and what the reason is? Yeah. And, and, just again less is more so i always say just do five minutes because i don't know a person that does five minutes of a workout and then won't actually do more so if you're feeling on those crappy days where you're like oh it's the last thing i feel like doing just something's do five better minutes. than nothing yeah absolutely five minutes will turn into 10 minutes and then it'll turn into 15 minutes and the reality is consistency will always beat volume so you're much better off to do a 20 minute workout six days a week than, you know, a two hour run twice a week. You know, you'll get, yeah. you, you'll actually, your body likes consistency. As long as you mix it up a little bit, don't do the same exact thing every day, mix it up a little bit and two or three of your workouts a week, 
get a little bit uncomfortable, push yourself a little bit, because that'll really create change. The more you can get out of your comfort zone, not every, it doesn't mean you have to go as hard as you can every single workout, but you'll be quite amazed at what your body's capable of and how quickly your weight will drop or your fitness will improve if you push yourself in a couple of those workouts each week. You no, know, fitness really and exercise does change lives, you know, and it, it becomes sort of almost, <laughs> as you just said, when you push yourself um, in fitness or in a workout that you realize you can sort of push yourself in other parts of your life too. So it's, it's great for that. Yeah, and look, any, with, it, uh, with your online um, program for anyone that hasn't sort of, um, sort of been part of it before, can you tell us a little bit about how it works and I mean, how do people benefit? Sure. So uh, it's all home workouts and they're all 28 minutes. So you get a different home workout with me every, every day. You've got different levels that you can choose. You've got low impact options. You can add yoga, you can add Pilates. Uh, then it's an eating plan where you get 21 delicious meals each week. They're all quick. They're all easy. Um, you can swap things in if you don't like a particular you know, ingredient or whatever it is. And it converts straight to your shopping list. And then it even convert, it even integrates with Woolworths if you want to get your shopping delivered to your house. Oh, so it's all about all easier the smarts. For people. <laughs> all the smart. And then the thing that I guess we're really proud of is the support. So we, I, I do videos every day in real time, giving you education, giving you motivation, keeping you on track. We've got an incredible Sam's crew, they're called customer service team that are there to help you if you ever need support, if you're feeling a bit flat or can I swap this recipe or can I do this or, you know, I've joined your program, but I, you know, can't do jumping movements. What should I do? You know, everyone's in a different, in a different boat. But you're given that accountability, uh, which is, is what sort of keeps people sort of continuing on. Do you, do you feel, what do you find? Yeah. yeah. We try to customize the experience as much as we can. You know, there's a lot of set and forget programs out there where you kind of pay your money and you get, a blanket approach that everyone else gets, we allow you to really customize your experience. So depending on how fit you are, whether you need low impact, whether you're vegetarian, um, you know, what your goals are, whether it's, you know, got to be more about strength, whether it's more about weight loss, you can really customize your experience. Um, and then, you know, the support factor, make sure that you stay on track. If you didn't, if you fell off the wagon yesterday, that's okay, let's focus on what you do today. And you become part of a pretty incredible community. We've got a, um, a private Facebook group just for people that are on the program. that has got yeah. 50,000 people in it. Crazy. And the, the support that they give each other. And there's something really powerful. It's all very well for Sam to tell you do this and you'll get fit. But when you're a 60-year-old woman and there's other 60-year-old women that you can really relate to saying... Don't worry, Mary, I was once where you are. You can do it. This is how far I've come. That can be really powerful. And the way yeah. they rally around each other, the friendships that they build, it's incredible. And you've also got a pregnancy and postnatal um, program yeah. as well, do you? We do. So if you're pregnant or, um, or you've had your six-week check from your doctor and you're now looking to slowly uh, work your way back into it, we have customised programs from an eating. So obviously more calories if you're breastfeeding. No pregnancy dangerous foods if you're going through your pregnancy. All the workouts are run by uh, Chloe, who's our pregnancy specialist physio. So you know that you're doing the right workouts depending on the stage of your pregnancy. It's a really popular program. Mm -hmm. And um, talking about food, you know, you can never really out train a bad diet. I guess the bad diet will always win every time. Um, so, yep. you know, why do you think eating habits are so important? I think it, when you're incorporating, of course, into a fitness at a program because you have all the great recipes as well. Yeah, it's a huge part of it. It's everyone, you know, my most, the question is probably the most frustrating is Sam, what's more important food or training? Like you have to choose one <laughs> much better. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, I can't believe how often I get asked that question, but absolutely the food is as important as the exercise and it's, it's important to show people that healthy food shouldn't taste like cardboard. You shouldn't have to be a master chef to create it. We've got 3,000 recipes in our program. They're all oh, quick. They're all, yeah, lots. Yeah, they're all delicious. And people don't like to think about it. You know, part of the success of our program is you wake up each day, you're on your website or you're on the app, and you literally go, right, here's my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner, my workout. I don't have to think about it. Yeah, that's the whole the thing, isn't it? Yeah. 
when you're shopping, you know you've got those ingredients in the fridge or in the in the pantry. Just allows you to get it done. Um, you don't have to think about it. You know if you're going out to dinner on Friday night, you might have dropped that meal, so you didn't have to buy the ingredients. We've just tried to be as, as practical as possible and reduce those barriers that often stop people getting into shape. Mm. And the whole sort of um, work, work out at home thing as well, there's been some stuff in the news in the last week about people just injuring themselves. Now, I wanted to ask your um, opinion. Is this just mainly due to technique that needs to be corrected? And what advice do you have for anyone that's unsure of how they should and, shouldn't, and what they shouldn't be doing? Um, it's all in the quality of the instructor, of course, um, and then yeah. listening to the instructor. But is there anything else with that at all? Look, I hadn't heard those reports, but I'm not... I'm not shocked by it. I think there's a lot of people that have probably started working out from home that haven't, um, that might, they may not be following a program. They may just be winging it or they may be following a program from someone that perhaps they shouldn't be. I think, I think, it, you know, it, it's the same as choosing a personal trainer or choosing a gym, you know, do it's your homework. Really make sure that person knows what they're talking about. I mean, don't choose an Instagram person who, you know, is fit themselves but doesn't actually have the background of training other people or the experience or the qualifications. I think it's um, I think it's important to do your homework a little bit. Um, and it's also how is that program delivered? If it's just in a written format, that doesn't give you a lot of feedback as someone on, on how to do those exercises. I mean, the way we deliver them, you are following me in real time on a video and I am talking you through every single exercise on what you should be focusing on from a technique perspective to ensure that you do the movement properly, you get the best out of it and you reduce the likelihood of injury. How about mirrors? Like I'm um, in a former life a lot earlier in um, my life, I was a trained professional dancer and I spent so much, so much of my life in front of a mirror and it all being technique and you can correct that in front of a mirror. Do you suggest stuff like that or, or not? Yeah. Oh, look, it, it if you're comfortable looking at yourself, uh, it, it can be quite quite good feedback, particularly the side-on view. We often don't realise, you know, our back is arching if we're in a plank or our knees are going too far forward when we're lunging. I think being at a glance and sort of check yourself can be quite powerful. I mean, we often get our 28ers to video themselves, send yeah. it in, and we provide them feedback on, the, you know, if they say, Sam, awesome. I like I'm not doing my lunge or my row right it's you know I, I just you know obviously we're not in the lounge room with them so we get them to just film it on their phone they send it in and then we can provide feedback and they love that yeah and what about age like you never talk too old to exercise it either and it sort of helps with so much stuff and you mentioned you've got people of all ages as well in the program so yeah, yeah. You... I don't know what our oldest 28 would be but they would be in their 80s if not get out of older. town so we, because we have a low impact, I mean, the majority of our members would be late 20s to early 50s. But, um, yeah, we definitely have um, some incredibly inspirational people. I, my my uh, work colleague here, the CEO of the business, just put it up, 90 years old is our oldest member. Oh, no way. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they do the low impact workouts. Um, they, love, they love still cooking. Um, and it's, That's you, know, you don't have to work out every day. You might be a member of my program and you might do the workouts two or three times a week. And if you're 90 years old, that's going to be incredibly valuable. Well, that's the thing, you know, it sort of helps with bone density, osteoarthritis, hypertension, blood pressure, um, and of course, all the mental health stuff. So, you know, that's just a thing people probably don't realise. They probably think, oh, I've sort of got past that age, I'm too old, but it's anything but really, isn't it? And you shouldn't make any assumptions. We have... We have people in their 70s and 80s on our Facebook page. You know, they're tech savvy, they're connected, they love the social aspect, um, and they're really vibrant, um, active members of our community. Yeah. And talking about your community, it must be so rewarding to see the transformation of your, your 28ers, as you call them. Um, so can you tell us some of your fave stories, I guess? Um, yeah, that, that you've sort of seen that transformation, because it's got to be, for yourself personally, really quite rewarding also, I guess. Oh yeah, it's the best job in the world. It's um, oh look, there's there's hundreds that stand out. There's a uh, there's a gentleman Troy on my program at the moment that's doing the program with his wife, and he's kind of journaling his experience. 
He's only been on the program for six weeks, but I think he's already lost nearly 20 kilos. God, that's uh, he, I love Changes how real lives. and vulnerable he is. That, you know, he, he's, it's in, and, you know, he's sharing his journey. He's inspiring other people as he goes, but he's very... Uh, I love the way he lifts up other people, him and his wife. They're both beautiful people. Uh, there's a lady, Linda, that she she joined my program on the first day that it launched in 2016 on the 1st of Feb. She sent me a message on Instagram saying, Sam, I watch you and Snez on The Bachelor from Scotland on YouTube. Mm. I love you guys. I need help with my fitness and um, and I need to lose weight, but I'm over here in Scotland. And I said, I'm about to launch 28. I'd love you to be a part of it. Anyway, she joined 28. She did her workouts from Edinburgh in her This is 2016. This is 2016. And um, she started to lose weight. Incredible woman. And we'd message each other and she'd be active in our Facebook community. And and, uh, I said, what's your goal? And she said, my goal is to go from 120 kilos to 60. I want to lose half my body weight. (laughs) I said, I've ripped. I've really let myself go. Anyway, so she did that. She got from 120 kilos to 60. And Snez and I, uh, Snez and I offered to fly her to Australia as a, as a reward. And she's such a lovely person. She wouldn't hear of it. She wouldn't take our gift. So Snez and I jumped on a plane. We flew oh, to Scotland. You went over there. Knocked on her door. And Get out. With a camera crew. And... She burst into tears. Oh. We spent the day with her. We took her out to lunch. She took us to her favourite walking and running spots. Oh, um, mate, that's just it. the best. It was incredible. And since then, she has come to Australia. She, um, you know, she's made so many friends with other people on the program that you know she was staying at their houses. They were picking her up from airports. It's uh, yeah, it's a, you know, it's ninety percent of our members are in Australia. But when you hear those. Hear those stories about how it's travelled the globe. It's pretty special. Oh, mate, that is just congratulations. That's just incredible and completely changing lives. And for every one person, there's like a ripple effect too because they, yeah. their friends, their family, their colleagues, everybody sees, you know, the difference in their lives. And, and so you're impacting not just them but their whole circle around them as well. So you just think of what legacy you're building and, and leaving and it's just astronomical. So, you know, it's just incredible, I guess. Well, so for anyone that hasn't actually been part of the program before, where and, where and how can they find you? I uh, just head to the website. All the information about how the program works is there. You can join up direct through the website. It's just 28 by samwood.com. And uh, we have a new program starting on Monday. Sam, love the chat. And congratulations again on everything you've, you've done and are doing. And uh, we love supporting you. Um, so take care and uh, give my love to the girls and let's chat soon. Sounds great, Rach. Thank you so much for your support. And I uh, love working with you guys. All right. Take care. Bye.